Hello, Grade 12 scholars. It's Ms. Novak. And we are in our final lesson of Week 8, Lesson 38 in your ELA Distance Learning. What can you expect from these videos? Well, we know that each video is going to be different, so variety. But we also know that I'm going to provide you with a list of materials and resources and page numbers where you can find everything. I'll also move through an overview of the different learning components. We'll engage in a quick model, maybe as it pertains to the writing task or close read. And of course, we'll preview the next day's learning. We are in day five of this week. Yesterday, we finished the text, My Old Home. Today, we will revisit and reread a few sections of the text to think about how they relate to one of the unit's guiding questions. The title of today's video is ELA G12 W8 L38. We'll be working with our same text. And again, our task today involves analyzing details and connecting the text to a guiding question. A few quick reminders before we officially start today's lesson. First, make sure that you are making time to share your learning with someone at home, over the phone, at another classmate, it's up to you. Next, complete the weekly fluency practice and document your efforts in your packet. And lastly, carve out that 20 minutes or more as we're heading into the weekend for your independent reading. A riddle of the day today, it's a funny one and perhaps my favorite. So what question can you never answer yes to? Pause the video here if you need to think about it because I'm about to reveal the answer. And the answer is, are you asleep yet? Think about it. If you're asleep, you can't consciously respond. I don't know, maybe it was funnier the first time I read it. But in any case, I'm now ready to really start thinking about today's lesson. Materials and resources that we'll need for today's lesson can all be found in your learning packet with the exception of something you write with. Lesson 38 is on page 121. Your note catcher, page 122, text is on pages 104 to 112, and your pencil or pen or something to write with can be found in your little workstation, I hope. So make sure that you gather these materials together now before we get into this lesson. This text relates so well to the essential questions and to the guiding questions. Again, our essential question is, what does it mean to call a place home? And our guiding questions, one of which we will be addressing today are, what makes a place important enough to write about? And in what ways is home both a place and a state of mind? Keep all of these in mind as we're analyzing the text today. Our learning target for today reads, I can connect my understanding of a text to a guiding question from the unit. These are my favorite kinds of lessons. I hope you feel the same. Today we will start by rereading a part of the text with a specific focus on the author's hopes and feelings. You will use your annotations to think and talk about the text. You might even make some new ones. You'll end the lesson by answering a few questions about the text on your note catcher, and then you'll make a connection to one of the guiding questions from the unit. In what ways is home both a place and a state of mind? And of course, even though it's Friday, you'll be ending with sharing your learning with someone else, and engage in some fluency practice and independent reading. Let's get started. I'll preface the slide by saying you can go back and reread the text in its entirety if you so choose, or just your annotations. For now, I really would like you to zoom in on paragraphs 84 to 88. In paragraph 84, I'd like you to mark the words that tell you why the author feels the way that he does. And in paragraph 86, I'd like you to mark the words and phrases that describe the hopes of the narrator. See why having a multicolored highlighter really seems to work these days? Anyways, take some time to complete these steps now. Pause the video. Here's a quick review of that close read. I'm going to give you an example from my close read of paragraph 84. So I lifted up these lines that said, all around me was an invisible high wall cutting me off from my fellows. Now remember, I'm trying to capture the narrator's feelings here. And these lines tell me that he feels cut off from the people who represent his childhood. Right? He's almost invisibly boxed in. And this depresses him thoroughly. So it doesn't make him feel great. Next, I also underline these lines. 
A small hero with a silver necklet among the watermelons had formerly been as clear as day, but now it suddenly seemed blurred. So he's actually speaking of his childhood memory of Jun Chu and how it's fading. And it leads me to believe that maybe he wants to see it clearly. This also saddens him that he can't quite put himself back in those days so that he can't appreciate perhaps the people around him, their relationships, and even in those old home in the same way. Compare my annotation to yours and see what comes up. Take some time to pause the video and do this now. Now that you've closely reread the ending of the story, Use your notes to think about two questions. I'd like you to jot down some of these notes in the margins of your text about what the narrator says his hopes for his nephew and Junchu's son are. Think about it. It's almost like a mirror image of him when he was a child, right? Then I'd like you to talk with a family member, caregiver, or friend about the following question. Do you think the speaker will ever again try to connect with Junchu? Why or why not? This is a very thought-provoking question, and it's interesting to note how our own experiences might fuel this answer. Pause the video and take some time to complete these activities now. And now for your writing tasks. These all can be done right there in your note catcher and require you to dig into the text a little bit. So I'd like you to first answer these two questions. What is meaningful about the description of how the speaker's nephew and Juntu's son behave during Juntu's visit with the narrator? And how did seeing Juntu affect the way the narrator feels in paragraph 84? Remember, I'm zooming right into 84 for my answer. Of particular importance, and I think I just noted it, think about the way in which these two young boys' situation resembles that of the narrator and Juntu 20 years ago. Next, I'd like you to answer this question in your note catcher. Think about how reading the old home has helped you understand about the ways in which a home is both a place and a state of mind, one of our guiding questions. In your note catcher, capture your response. In what ways is home both a place and a state of mind? Now keep in mind, speaking of which, you can bring in your own personal experiences here but make sure you balance that with evidence from the text. Take some time to pause the video and to complete these steps now. I know that I was really excited about my writing efforts today, and I hope you were as well. If you have any questions or even celebrations, feel free to contact your teacher at their first name, dot their last name, at DetroitK12.org. I'm sure they'd love to read your response or simply to hear from you. Lesson 39. So in our next lesson, we will start reading a new text, a news article about families who live on military bases. And our learning target is, I can read and write a summary of an article. I'm really interested to move into this new area, and I hope you are as well. Thank you for joining with me in today's learning. Here's a few quick reminders as you head into the weekend. Don't forget to talk about this lesson with someone at home especially because it relates to different parts of your life, how you viewed your home. They might have a really interesting response to some of these questions. So engage in that conversation. Next, read for 20 minutes and chart your progress inside of your grade 12 learning packet. Remember, don't forget to ask questions of this text, not just reserve for class texts. Next, practice your fluency. See how far you've come. Maybe you want to compare your efforts of this week to weeks prior. It's up to you. We'll see you for next week's learning in week nine.